saying, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Glory to God. We, we bless God for his faithfulness, for his mercy, and for his loving kindness. He's always, always, always working to bless us each time. And therefore, we thank you for another time to feed at his table. And I welcome you to this episode of the Kingdom Word broadcast. And I believe that you've been following on, the Lord must have been blessing you through this broadcast. And we give glory to God for it. Today we will look unto God for a special blessing. And we shall be looking at a few things that are pertinent in this hour. Now, the world as we know it has become a global village. The resultant effect is that a lot of, you know, intermingling and coming together and exchange of ideas and, and values. Standards change. People imbibe different kinds of standards. People begin to walk and, um, you know, so the result, the effect of this is that um, you can not only say this is good and this is bad. The world has come to a point where good or bad has become relative terms. If you say something is good, it becomes good for you. If something is dark and you say it is light, nobody can question because as far as you're concerned, it is light. If you kill somebody and say that, that um, well, you did it because, you know, for a good cause. People will not argue so much. So good and bad have become relative terms. Hallelujah. And that is what has brought about all kinds of wickedness upon the earth. All kinds of atrocities. All high level of immorality. The fear of God is really get it. In fact, people do not reckon with God anymore. If you talk about God, you look at as somebody who, who does not exist in the present world, as somebody who is foolish, as somebody who has, who has no strength, no wisdom, or understanding, as somebody who, who is uninformed. But you see, that was the situation in the words that we read in the scriptures. The high rate of rape now in the world, men rape children, four year old children are raped by men, young men rape women of 70 years old. What is happening? The world is turning upside down. Because the standards have been destroyed. People say stand up for themselves. There's no more, some say this is the norm. The things that are supposed to, to be looked at before us as perverse are now being looked at as the norm. But that is the situation that was predicted before now. That it will happen. We know that Sodom and Gomorrah in the example of what happened before. How the whole world was, the whole place was, you know, full of sin and, and atrocities. The Bible tells us, and the Lord God appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heart of the day, and he lived 
up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servants. This is, this is the, 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 the Lord visiting the people. Hallelujah. Now this Abraham. Now, if you read down here, you discover that here the Lord, you know, has decided to visit the earth. He has looked at the things that are going on on the earth and discovered that man has gone out of hand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The present world situation was predicted. Second Peter chapter 3 tells us about what we are seeing now in the world. Hallelujah. Let's read 2 Peter. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. I'm reading from verse 9 of 2 Peter chapter 3. But is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Praise the Lord. Now, um, here we're seeing a prediction of the thing that's coming to happen. The wickedness that will come upon the world and destruction that God will bring as a repercussion for this attitude and these happenings. And if we if, if we read Second Timothy also chapter three, it gives an idea of what we are seeing right now. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Of course, you don't need anybody to tell you anymore. Or to explain to you because we see it every day around us that we are living in a perilous time. Say, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despised of those that are good, traitors. Haiti, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Now, we are being given an idea of what is happening now. This is this situation now. But in the midst of all that, that we we'll see in the walls of the past, in the past, you know, times. God gets a point that is disgusted with man and he will wave in to save the situation, to punish man for the sins and, and destructions, you know, that is wrought upon the world that he has created. Praise the Lord. Now, looking at this, the Bible tells us there are generations of people since the creation of the world. Now, I want what we're looking at now is a new generation. A new generation that's the thought I want us to consider today in our broadcast. Praise the Lord. Now, what's the generation? I'm trying to give us an idea of what happens in the world now and destruction that are, that are present in the world and the way the world is walking. No regard for anything about God. It's not new. There have been situations like that in the past, and there's something God is doing about it. Now, talking about generations, there are generations that, that are, you know, 
disobeyed God, rebelled against God, but God will always judge those generations. Now, what is a generation? A generation is simply put a group of people who live at the same time, if you like. Some of them, in some cases, they are described as you know, people who live and of average you know, um, age. When we have to talk about a generation, it is, 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 is a, a, a period of time that people live. And, and the certain things that characterize certain generations that make them distinct, that make them, you know, separate from other generations. A generation could be, I stop people, you know, within the age of 30, because that's the, the age that, that is accepted as man, you know, uh, in the scriptural world that man is said to mature. So it's stop people, generations. But here, the generation that's been talked about is, is a period of time that people lived upon the earth. Like talk about the generation of Noah. Now, if you look at the scriptures, like Genesis um, chapter five, verse four, the Bible starts that ver that chapter by saying, "This is the book of generations of Adam, in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him." So we see this generation called generation of Adam. The people that live within the time Adam was created. And all through that period, you know, the children that he had and those who lived after, that's the generation. And what happened all the descendants, they all count as generations of Adam. We're not going into the details of the story of that, but just to give an idea what a generation is that we are talking about. We also have, you know, the generation called the generation of Jacob. Now, if you look at the same book of Genesis chapter 37, we read from verse 2. He said, These are generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhar and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now, they're talking about generations of Jacob. So, so those who lived, you know, in household, the families, and descendants of Jacob, these are kind of the, the generation. Now, that could be an understanding of a generation. But also, for this uh, meditation today, we shall be looking at generation as explained in the scriptures that we're going to read shortly. Let first of all read Matthew chapter 11, verse 16. Here, but whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you and ye have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he had a devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man glutinous, and a one biber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of our children. Then began he to up, upbraid the cities, wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazim, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you have been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee have been done in Sodom, it will have remained unto this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Now, Jesus was referring to a certain generation. A generation that, that do not heed to the call of God. A generation that walk in their own way. A generation during his time, he was referring to them as a generation, a wicked and perverse generation. He described this particular generation. So, people who lived during the time of Christ, 
there was perversion also. People rejected him. Those who claimed to serve God, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the man in temples, the high priests, and all of them. The Lord referred to this generation as a general, wicked and pervert generation. You can watch past episode of Kingdom World on YouTube through www.youtube.com slash user slash Kingdom World Online. Also visit www.kingdomworld.net for mp3 and other Kingdom resources. Praise the Lord. And we read in Genesis also, go by Genesis chapter 7 verse 1, we read, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Now in the generation of Noah, there was, there was unrighteousness, wickedness. And God referred that generation to destroy it. But out of that generation, that is something we need to note now as we go on. Out of that generation of wickedness, God raised up a new generation, the generation of Noah. The generation that entered the ark, a new generation was born out of that, that entered the ark with Noah. Praise the Lord. Now, follow closely. We are coming somewhere. Every generation... God has a people. In every generation, God has a people who will always stand as a witness to him. In the midst of, you know, check all through. The generations we talked about, of the time of Noah, you know, the time of, um, you know, um, Lot, Solomon, and Gomorrah, all these generations, the generation when Christ was preaching, they referred them all with one description, the wicked and pervert generation. Now, we have our own present generation. Not different from the generation that we read about. This generation were condemned generations because of the way they walked. They walked against God. They walked away from God. They walk in their own ways. They walk in wickedness and unrighteousness. They walk in iniquity, in atrocities. They perverse the ways of the Lord. And so the Lord condemned them. And God brought judgment upon these generations. But there's something peculiar that God did in all of this. In each of these generations, God always had a people who, who will serve him, people who will know him, who will walk in righteousness, those who will save and deliver out of generations who will stand as a witness against them. So it won't be as if, well, we couldn't help it, but live this way. There are people who also live with the fear of God. The Bible talks about Enoch. The Bible says in the midst of the generation of, uh, of the time of Enoch, generation were generation of, of wickedness. They didn't walk with God. But in the midst of that, there was a man called Enoch. The Bible said, and Enoch walked with God. Hallelujah. God will always raise up a remnant that will proclaim his name, that will show that God had not been unrighteous. Those who heard the word of the Lord, those who understood what God was saying, but he refused to walk in it. And those who walk in it now stands as judgment against those who walk in their own perverse ways. Now, what am I saying? In the world today, we can, we can address the world today as a generation. A generation that you can be said to be condemned. Now, Jesus spoke concerning this generation and the things that will happen in this generation. Say this wicked and perverse generation. And remember, Jesus was speaking about the things that will happen, and he spoke, he said, He said, This generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. He was 
speaking in Matthew chapter 24. We, we saw about the end time, saw about the things that happened in the day of the Lord. We saw all this. The Bible says that this sorrow, this thing that will come upon the earth, that all these things will come to pass within this generation. Which generation? Now, it talked about, you know, the, 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 the fig tree. When you, you observe the fig tree, you know, when they begin to shed their leaves, you know that, you know, when they are at hand, you know about summer, you know about this. Now, he tried to use the, the children of Israel, who are actually at the feet, to give us an idea of what is happening and the plan and the purposes and the timing or the plan of God upon the earth. So it's a generation in which these things will be fulfilled. Generation in which, you know, the, the, the Jews are brought back together as a nation. Generation in which we begin to see, you know, the children of Israel you know, manifesting as a nation and standing to face their enemies. This generation are generations that the Lord was speaking about that the generation that the things is talking about will come to pass. Generation in which the world will, 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 will be melted away with the fire that the Lord will release upon the earth. That is this generation. And I tell you, this generation has done far more than well, the other generations that were destroyed did. Now the world today, the kind of things that happen, the kind of wickedness that are present in this world today has superseded, and that would say, the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I always say that, you know, um, Sodom and Gomorrah, we have to question God if this world is spared. Because the, 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 the things that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah they were destroyed. You can say they are child plays when compared with the things that are going on in our present world, in this generation. Praise the Lord. Now you see that the young folks have no respect for anything. The spirit has been released upon the earth. The spirit of rebellion and disobedience. The spirit of immorality. All kinds of things are taking place. No respect for anything. If we consider authority. There's killing. There's maiming. There's great deep corruption. And these things were say they are limited to the outside world, but even in the house of the Lord, those who name the name of the Lord, they're not spared. This spirit will catch up with them. A lot of people are living in sin, iniquity, and in wickedness, and they still call upon the name of the Lord. But the Bible says, let him that name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. So there's no reason why God's judgment will not come upon the earth. These generations, then we're talking about this present generation is doomed for destruction. But you see, even in the midst of this condemned generation, God has a plan. Hallelujah. Because there are those who are calling upon them of the Lord, you know, in reality, that those who are following on to know the Lord, there are those who walk in the way of the Lord. There are those who are walking within the confines and the boundaries that the Lord has set. But we talked about that God set the boundaries. Hallelujah. The boundaries that cannot be broken. God set the boundaries in the earth, boundaries for the waters, the seas, the boundaries where the forest, and all. God set the boundaries. And God said the boundaries of the way man should walk and live. What man should do, what man should not do. But man in rebellion had broken the boundaries. That ignored God 
who has made them, who sustains them. Therefore, God's judgment is coming upon the earth. We are beginning to see the initial manifestation of the judgment of God upon the earth, upon wickedness. And this judgment will hit anywhere wickedness and unrighteousness is found. Doesn't matter where they found in, in the unbeliever or found in the believer, anywhere this unrighteousness is found or wickedness, judgment will come upon it. Of course, the Bible tells us that judgment shall begin in the household of God. So that God may be justified. Now it doesn't matter who is concerned. Wherever there's unrighteousness, judgment will come upon it. That tells us that we need to comport ourselves, we need to be careful to dissociate ourselves from sin, from iniquity, from wickedness, from those who walk in that way. We should not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. We should not sit in the seat of the scornful. We should not, we should not walk in the ways of the world. Paul had bonuses say, we say we should not be conformed to the world system of doing things, the ways of the world. But rather, we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind, which comes by the word of God that comes unto us and we yield to it. That way we shall be able to discern what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. In every generation, no matter how wicked, God always had some remnant who will stand for his name that he will bring up to showcase that God is a God of righteousness. Will you be among those people? Will you be among the remnant? Will you be among those God will showcase as, as, as you know, as, 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 as a, a remnant who will show that God is justified in his judgment upon the world. God will not live himself without a witness. I call you to come and be part of that witness that God will have concerning the world, the present generation. God bless you as you do in Jesus' name. Amen. This message and other messages of the end time vision are available on audio CDs, VCDs, DVDs and MP3s and the following books. For details, visit us on www.kingdomword.net or email info at kingdomword.net or call these numbers 0302-234-1111.